Greetings. Following my two decade extensive research experience and being an academic leader in computer science, mostly focusing on AI in the state of South Dakota. And today, here is what I come up with. AI for all and for good. Let's go back and take a look how ancestors were trying to do. Our ancestors back then were worried about sending kids to the school. Just that, fair enough. The primary motive behind this was to increase literacy rate, let them educate it. The whole game today is different. Our focus is to raise awareness of how applied AI use cases happen for everybody. Before I start digging down a little, little deeper, let me ask you this. How many of you, raise your hand, how many of you are aware of using any sort of AI tool for your day-to-day -day life work? Beautiful. This is expected, and that's the talk is about. Not you are, I'm not surprised too. Let me start with something beautiful. Back in 2018, Google CEO, Mr. Pichai, said the following statement. AI is more profound than electricity and fire. What a beautiful statement, but for me and for you, it was a little more emotional and full of sentiments in it. We take it, but in line with that statement, let me pick some of the beautiful quotes by the futurist, well-recognized futurist. One of them said, AI, the one who leads in AI, by 2030 will lead the whole world until 2100. Beautiful. At the same time, if that's gonna happen, then there is a way to see AI must be exponentially growing until 2032 or so. These two codes set the clear expectation of the need of trillions of dollars to be spent on AI chips. Remember, industries and humans, they, bo they both work beautifully together to make human lives together be better. Can I say this? AI is the deal breaker. You learn most of the things by now. AI can make a difference or deal anywhere ranging from automation industry, robotics we're talking about, digital humanities, USD is working on that. An ancient document, digitization, is one of them. Healthcare, future epidemics, is gonna come and AI would solve some of the potential problems. Fashion industry and all the way up to service to the people, that's what we're looking at. And it's all beautiful. To make it beautiful, more beautiful, let me have this. We are in South Dakota. We should take an example of precision agriculture. Precision ag. Here is a farmer. A farmer is aiming at optimizing the yield by reducing the cost. I'm talking about bank loan. What could have been better today is if a camera integrated drone is flying around and all over the field and help me, you, learn about where the weeds are through image analysis or amazing tools techniques. 
the amount of spray you have to do is going to go all the way down. You don't have to uniformly or consistently apply pesticides control everywhere. What does it mean is you don't have to pay a lot of money on that. And of course, the yield is obvious. By now, like everywhere, we understand the fact that AI is not for computer science and or computer scientists. AI for you, you and you. Academically, I'm talking about non-computer science majors. Why is that? Interesting. Let's talk about today's trend in data science market. If I say how many of us work as analysts, obviously a couple, a handful of people will raise their hand. 60% or more data analysts today are coming from non-computer science background. We're talking about market, job market. They come from humanities, social sciences, business, arts, and so on. When they come to the market, they come up with the beautiful and pressing challenges, problems, and projects with them. As they understand the sentimental values of the data at the time when we collect data and at the output when machines making decisions. What a beautiful story. Understanding the sentimental values of data is the only way to sell AI tools. Did I not just talk about AI in business world? Beautiful. Like it or not, it is inevitable. It's going to come nearby your house, my house, soccer playground everywhere. Energy optimization is one of the beautiful topics in the universe that we have been working on as, AI, as an AI scientist. Why did I say energy optimization? Reason, energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. It is us to optimize as much as we can. AI for K-12 education is the one that we should be looking at for the better generations to come. At the same time, when it takes safety of the nation into account, cyber analytics is no exception. Then here is a beautiful piece with the following statement. If you are a business major, and just an example, think of yourself today and after five years with and without AI tools in your pocket. There will be a big difference. The difference you cannot even dream today. The significant difference exists for all majors. Either you coming from biology, chemistry, physics, and any other major. Can I say this? This is completely mine. Without AI and data science tools, you are basically inclined to shutting down your business in the next five years or so. True. Let's watch. The reason behind this is we collect huge amount of data. The data you cannot manually label, you cannot manually organize or analyze. What I'm trying to tell you is the following quote. Your domain is the hat, and AI, data science, too, is the beautiful ever feather in the hat. That feather, I'm referring to AI and data science, would make you clearly stand out in your domain. That's the guy. He's got the feather. Everybody's wearing hat, not the feather in the hat. Look at the difference. We're talking about big data uh, just a moment ago. And big data is going to bring lots of problems, not just 
not just the jobs. Making sense of big data is today's primary deal, as every bit of data has a meaning. And we're happy because we got machine learning tools there for us to analyze, crunch, chew, and get the meaningful output at the end. What a beautiful life. In the era of big data, supercomputers stand as a technological powerhouse. Remember, big data, supercomputers, and the output. We need the yield anyway. While we enjoying supercomputers anywhere from Google, Tesla, Amazon, all the way up to crypto. Who doesn't like it? We forget and we've been missing the consequence of how supercomputers is doing. The consequence, the potential consequence is the environmental impact. Did I not say ChatGPT? Who is going to forget that? ChatGPT alone drinks more than 500 milliliters of water for every 15 to 20 conversations. We enjoy it, ChatGPT. You do, I do, everybody. How about the possible potential impact? The other research studies reported that an estimated hundreds of megatons of carbon emission happened per year just by supercomputers, which is very close to American aviation. It's sucking. Then I look at, I look back to the computer scientists to see what we should be looking at and doing. It's a time for computer scientists to look at the problem close. The, close, the closest problem we can do is sustainable AI solution. Sustainable AI solution can happen only when green computing technicalities are in place. Then, for me, it's a time to, to teach what is green computing. I know we all have heard about human AI, human artificial intelligence. Human begins, humans begin learning from the moment of their birth. Their neurons get trained every second, every minute, hour, and so on. Remember, one human brain is composed of 86 billion neurons. Do you think all of our neurons we use every day? Let me simplify this. If I say somebody, let's, let's go for a coffee after the event, how, much, how many seconds you would need to reply back to me? Probably less than 30 seconds. Now you realize that you have not used all neurons you have in your brain. Let me do the other way around. If you get a complicated, a little more complicated ask, maybe science, math, or calc. Who does like calc? <laughs> then you would take a little more time, maybe a day, asking your friends or use all neurons you have. That will delay the process. When we get a stress, that time we use all neurons we have, or maybe many of them. That, that day we need more food because we almost go fat. What I'm trying to tell you is using more neurons, meaning consume more energy. Humans don't use all neurons, even we have billions of them. Understanding the use of right subset of neurons for any ask from simple to difficult is what the human AI is about. Then, as a computer scientist, can I not build that kind of AI model? 
So that's the model, exact replica of human AI. That's what a computer scientist and everybody in the world should be looking at. A an AI model is composed of hundreds of layers and one layer has thousands of thousands of neurons. On top of that, we have so many numbers and parameters we call to play with. Let us build that neural network where we use those neurons according to the ask, simple to difficult. I'm trying to help you understand if the ask is simple, I don't have to use all neurons I have in my AI model. Less neurons, using less neurons, meaning having less energy. Having less energy, there is no real carbon footprint. Let me go back. Carbon footprint is serious. It is a time for us to invest on sustainable AI solutions. That's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let's build the future together, the future of sustainable AI solutions with green computing in place and no to carbon footprint. So my kids, your kids, kids, they live beautiful life like we have today. Thank you very much. Go yours. <laughs>